Hey guys, Isabel here. Welcome back to Real Disney. This weekend has been a super huge one for Star Wars fans. It is the weekend of Star Wars Celebration Europe 2023 in London. I unfortunately cannot be there, so I hope all you guys who can are having an awesome time. But today we got a really big panel for the Ahsoka series. And even though I wasn't in the panel, I was still able to gather some updates on the show that I'd like to share with you guys. So again, since I wasn't actually able to be in the panel, these will not be in-depth details of what was going on, just more bigger picture information and uh, just something to look forward to as the show gets closer. Now this show, Ahsoka, is one I am super excited for. I reacted to the trailer yesterday, so if you guys wanna check that out, feel free. But it looks so amazing and it just seems like everything that I grew up with Star Wars is just gonna all come full circle and I'm super excited to watch it. Ahsoka is one of my favorite characters and uh, I can't wait to see her do her thing in live action. But starting off the panel, Dave Filoni and Jon Favreau took the stage followed by Rosario Dawson. Dave discussed the origins of Ahsoka and how he created her with George Lucas for the Clone Wars animated series. At first, Dave thought George wouldn't want another character getting so close to Obi-Wan and Anakin, but George wanted Anakin to have a Padawan and uh, she was born but I have heard she was almost not going to return to the series uh, and Dave pushed to keep her to keep her on. And thank goodness he did because I personally think she's one of the greatest characters in Star Wars history. But diving on into the show, the main drive is not for Ahsoka to be a Jedi, but a person who helps out when she can and to spread her own good deeds throughout the galaxy, just to be a good person essentially, which is what after season five, of the Clone Wars, Ahsoka does embody, so I'm glad that they're sticking with that characterization for her. One could argue she could also be classified as a true Force user, what the Jedi are actually supposed to be. There is a reason why she has white sabers after all. And we got another snippet of Ezra. Rosario mentioned that Ahsoka's relationship with Ezra is a very powerful one, since we probably won't get him interacting with anyone from the main group until the end of the series, if that's what's gonna happen. Uh, I'm sensing some visions on Ahsoka's part. Maybe maybe we hear Ezra's voice in her head a little bit. They communicate that way. So that'll be interesting to see depicted. I'm actually not too sure how they will do that. And in regards to Ahsoka's character design, there is a great improvement as there has been a significant advancement in technology since the second season of The Mandalorian. Ahsoka's look who will now be a synthetic skin stretched over a 3D model, as opposed to the foam contraption that it was in The Mandalorian, which is awesome. I know she's gonna look amazing, and I'm really happy that they took the Star Wars fans' critiques into account and uh, switched up the look because I am, I'm, I am excited. And it's also just awesome to know how quickly these things advance. That technology with the synthetic skin wasn't even available when The Mandalorian was being filmed. And then we have Natasha Liu Bordizo and Mary Elizabeth Winstead on stage, who play Sabine Wren and Hera, respectively. Hera is going to be everybody's mom. That's also how she was in Rebels. So again, loving the continuity of the characterization. And we will see Hera on a new journey as she becomes a general and also a maternal figure. Now at the end of Rebels, she did have a child. I'm not sure if that will be in the Ahsoka series. I don't know why it wouldn't be if we're also following Hera's storyline, but I am also excited to see her rise to being a general. And of course you can't have the Rebels gang if you don't include Chopper. He will definitely be in the series. He has beef with other droids as we saw in Rebels. He gets distracted easily and apparently hates loath cats. So not not at all a change from the animated series, but it will be fun to see him in live action. I love Chopper. I love how chaotic he is and I am excited to see what shenanigans he will get to in the series. Another announcement is that David Tennant will be returning as the voice of Hu Young. Diana Lee will be returning as the magistrate from The Mandalorian. Morgan Elsbeth the one who battled with Ahsoka. The Magistrate will be very loyal to Thrawn, and that character's background will be explored, which I'm excited for. I definitely want an explanation of how exactly 
she became in Admiral Thrawn's good graces and uh, why is she loyal to him? I want to know all these things. Ray Stevenson and Ivana Sakno also appeared at the panel. They are the Force users in the trailer. I believe Baylor or Baleen, I'm not exactly sure how to spell or pronounce the name. And Shin, Sheen, S-H-I-N, again, sorry if I mispronounced these, but they are both working for the Magistrate. So like a lower tier of also working for Thrawn, essentially, but of, and from the trailer, we see that they are quite the opposition for Ahsoka. But Ahsoka has taken on, I feel like, much more powerful Force users, so I'm confident in her abilities. And then we get the directors for Ahsoka, Dave Filoni, of course, Peter Ramsey, Greta Patil, Rick Famuia, Jennifer Getzinger, and Steph Green. And again, the composer, Kevin Kinner, will return. He also did Rebels and the Clone Wars animation. The Ahsoka series has now been confirmed to have eight episodes in total, so very similar to The Mandalorian. I'm excited, I wish it was more, personally. But, you know, I will, I will take what I can get. And we now have confirmation of who is playing Thrawn, Lars Mikkelsen. He's also another one who has played quite the number of villains in his career. And he has that sort of subtle quietness that I think will be really great for Thrawn's character. Which leads me right into my next point of conversation. Timothy Zahn, the author of the original Thrawn trilogy, is a consultant on Thrawn. The character itself, which I'm super happy for. The Thrawn trilogy was the first ever novel, Star Wars media, that besides the movies and shows that I read. You know, Filoni wants to get Thrawn right, so he brought in original source material. Again, Heir to the Empire was in fact mentioned in the Ahsoka trailer, so to me that's just amazing. I'm so happy. That's probably the, like, the best part, the best news from the panel that I have received. But yeah, in the books, he's very conniving. He's always one step ahead of everyone else. I think the way he used art to know the secrets about someone's civilization was explored much better than in Rebels, personally. Yeah, and he just... I'm so excited. It's, it's gonna be so good. <laughs> and in the panel, they did show a new trailer with a little bit of added scenes uh, that was not made public. That was for the panel goers exclusively but I can give a brief description of some of the extra things that were added in contrast to the trailer we got yesterday. So it was a remixed trailer and it featured a speeder trace through Lothal. They did see Thrawn's face in the original trailer. We just saw the back of his head, so that's pretty cool. I hope to see Thrawn's face soon, but we'll have to wait a couple months until that second trailer. We see Sabine using Ezra's lightsaber which, oh, I am not ready for that moment. <laughs> and we do get some Purgles. Purgles played an important part at the end of Rebels. That's how Ezra disappeared. And we did see a shadow of them in one of the earlier episodes of The Mandalorian. So they're coming back. They're coming back. And I am excited to see them and learn even more about them. But that's all I got for you about the panel. That was what was discussed. They did not live stream the panel just yet as I'm recording. I don't know if they will later today, but I wanna get that information out for you guys so you're as well informed as you can be. Also another thing to mention that I actually did kind of forget about is that Ahsoka takes place during the same time as The Mandalorian. She was in the second season. I don't know why I forgot about that but just something to think about. We don't know what might be hinted at in The Mandalorian could also play a part in the Ahsoka series, you know, as well as keeping in mind that you have to maintain continuity. That is a big thing for Dave Filoni is maintaining continuity as he, he said in an interview during celebration. So I'm excited. I have faith. I cannot wait for this season. I need the series to come out right now. I need to watch it right now. But guys, that's everything I got for you on the Ahsoka panel. Leave a like on the video, comment what are you most excited to see in the series streaming August. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future Star Wars reaction videos, Star Wars discussion videos, and on the occasion Star Wars updates. But guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.